2. Consider the function f at x is equal to x squared minus 2. Determine the equation of the inverse. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is just rewrite the f at x with a y. Remember, f at x is just a fancy way of writing y if y is a function. So if y passes the vertical line test instead of y, I could rewrite it as f at x. So that's really just y equals x squared minus 2. So there's the original. Now I'm going to come up with the equation for the inverse. So for the inverse, I'll do it in pink. What you want to do is switch the positions of x and y. So wherever you see a y, rewrite it with an x. Wherever you see an x, rewrite it with a y. Okay, so there's your inverse function. x equals y squared minus 2. But we prefer to have y all by itself, so you're going to just do a bit of algebra in order to re-isolate for y. So y squared is equal to x plus 2. And then to get the y by itself, you're going to square root both sides, keeping in mind that when you square root, you get positive negative. So y is equal to positive negative square root of x plus 2. All right, now we're going to sketch f at x equals x squared minus 2 and its inverse. All right, so x squared minus 2, that's a parabola opening up with the vertex at 0, negative 2. So 0, negative 2 is the vertex. Now I'm warning you all right now, I suck at drawing graphs. My printing is fine. Um, my drawing skills suck. So be patient with me. I'm sure you guys can draw much better than I can. So x squared minus 2 is a parabola opening up with the vertex at 0, negative 2. Uh, that left arm kind of looks wonky. Let's try that again. Is that a little better? Oh, well, it's not too bad. Um, let's go with what I have here. Okay, so I've got f at x equals x squared minus 2. Okay. So there's my parabola opening up with the vertex at 0, negative 2. Now before I draw the inverse, quick question. Do you think the inverse will be a function? Will the inverse pass the vertical line test? It won't. It will fail the vertical line test. The inverse is not a function. Why? If you look at this parabola opening up, does it pass the horizontal line test? It does not. The original parabola fails the horizontal line test, which means your, um, your inverse will fail the vertical line test, okay? All right, so for your inverse, um, 0, negative 2 is going to become negative 2, 0. If your parabola is opening up, its inverse will open to the right. It'll be a sideways parabola opening to the right because up and right are inverses of each other. Okay, so I'm going to draw my inverse here. That's not bad. It's not great, but um, good enough for me. Okay, and that pink graph, again, that's your inverse. Okay, so... Now that inverse fails the vertical line test, so we know that it would not be a function. All right, now part C. We're going to describe two ways to restrict the domain of f at x so that the inverse is a function. All right, part C is a standard of excellence question. We need to come up with two ways so that if I were to apply restrictions on the parabola, the inverse would be a function. Okay, so I'm going to get you guys to watch. You don't need to write anything down. Okay, I just want you to watch. Okay, now the reason why the inverse is not a function is because it fails the vertical line test. It fails the vertical line test because you have two arms that are pointing to the right. So what if I got rid of the bottom arm of the inverse? Do you agree that that half 
parabola, the top half of that sideways parabola would pass the vertical line test? Is my inverse now a function? Yes, it is. Okay, but I can't just willy-nilly get rid of the bottom arm because then I wouldn't have a true reflection in the line y is equal to x. So if I got rid of the bottom arm of the inverse, I would have to get rid of the left arm of the original. And there's where my restriction is. If I only kept the right arm of the parabola, that would mean I'm keeping the top arm of the inverse, making the inverse a function. So I can restrict the original function by just keeping the right arm. Okay, and I'll write that down for you guys in a minute. All right, so that's one way is by just removing the left arm of the original function, and that would mean you are keeping the top arm of the inverse. You can get rid of the right arm of the original function. So if I got rid of the right arm, that would mean the top arm of my inverse is gone. Now, is my inverse a function? Well, it sure is because I got rid of one of the arms. So that would be the second way to restrict your domain of the original is by get, getting rid of the right arm because that would correspond to the top arm. So if you kept the left arm of the original, you'd be keeping the bottom arm of the inverse. Okay, so how would that look when you write it down? So what you can do is for the function f at x, you can draw in the x squared minus 2, but only keep the right arm. The right arm would be greater than or equal to 0. And there is the domain restriction on the original function. So this would be the right arm of f at x which is essentially the top arm of the inverse. Okay, so that's one way to restrict your domain or keep the left arm of the original. So x squared minus two, but x is less than or equal to zero. So that would be the left arm of f at x, which corresponds to the bottom arm of the inverse. Okay, so 